Scott Allen Miller here with Sam IT on YouTube, and today I'm going to talk about bundling, but not bundling like of normal services, but bundling things that are critical to your organization into other services on which you have codependencies. This is uh, really a risk discussion around bundling. We could also have some great ones about cost and how bundling seems better than it actually is in a lot of situations. But what we're going to talk about today is the same thing that we historically uh, had to deal with when we had ISPs and email. Now this goes back to the 1990s, of course, but it used to be that people would get their ISP, uh, you know, um, AOL online or something like that, and they would get their email from that provider. And this, of course, at first sounded great. Well, of course, you get your email from the people who provide you your internet lines and very quickly as people wanted to move to new cities or get a different provider they learned that they were locked in and their data was trapped with that provider and they had been uh, inappropriately coupled uh, with especially in the case of an ISP with someone who had a physical presence and uh, a very strong interest in trapping you it ended up in a it at least it provides a potential for an extortion situation whether that's actual extortion or simply creating a situation where it is more difficult than it should be to leave a service. So you lose mobility, you lose, lose flexibility, you lose freedom. There are a couple places where this is incredibly critical and we need to spend a lot more time thinking about it than most people normally do. One continues to be your ISP. Now, we've learned, of course, we would never bundle our email with our ISP today. That's ridiculous. That would never even occur to someone. We would never get our DNS from them. So all kinds of things we would not do. But we still get some things, um, VPNs for example, that was not quite so bad because the VPN is already tied to that service, so if we move, chances are we don't want the same VPN, so maybe that's okay. The really terrible one is telephony, uh, VOIP services or similar, that should no more be tied to your uh, ISP than should email or DNS. Uh, by doing so, you give that vendor who has a physical presence and a lot of potential to lock you in um, unnecessary power and control over your business. Business. They may refuse to port your numbers, they may make uh, phone calls problematic, they may hold your service, whether it's internet or phones, hostage. You need those two things to be floating independently so that you can make proper financial decisions and proper risk assessments of both of them independently. Uh, for example, if you need to fail over from one ISP to another because of whatever reason, if your phone is tied to that ISP, you're going to have significant problems. Of course, you may have an ISP that lets you do things, but you're at their mercy and that is very uncommon. Another place where this is even more important, if you can believe there's something worse than that, this one is simpler and yet really, really common. And that is the separation of your registrar, your DNS hosting, and your web and other services hosting. Uh, with this, um, there's a common factor where people will very, uh, very often, one, go to your IT for your registrar services. Registrar services are not an IT function, right? They're a marketing and sales function. You're talking about the name of your company online. We're talking about a, an internet real estate operation. IT can help you like with the actual logistics of doing it, but in reality, it is a ridiculous thing for IT to be involved with. IT is not marketing. There is nothing technological involved. There's, there's almost nothing except for the business presence. Yeah, if you want to bring in IT and say, all right, IT, tell us if we're doing something that's really obvious. You know, sometimes IT has some insight that someone else doesn't have great, loop them in, but it's not an IT function. This is everything but IT pretty much. With registrar services, we're not talking about tech, we're talking about the real estate, the presence, the identity of the organization. Short of your actual incorporation paperwork, very few things are as critical as your registrar information. Your registrar is uh, the organization that, uh, that you buy your URLs, right? If you're going to be mycompany.com, that's where you register that name, that's where you own that name, that's how you get control of that name. The CEO or the board or someone in that type of position should always be in control of that information. It should never go to even the IT department, let alone anyone else, right? Never an outsider, always an internal person, always someone who's, who's uh, very long lived, always someone who's in a position of uh, extreme ties to the business. Uh, second from that is DNS and your registrar points to your DNS host. Now, at this point, we become technologically involved and IT has to become involved, and that's great, no problem there. So your registrar only holds critical identity information and a pointer to who your DNS host is. The DNS host should never be your registrar host, and the reason for this is, as with many things, separations of duty. You want your IT team, whether internal or external, to be able to work on your DNS 
and you want your legal team to have control of your registrar services. You never want IT to have control of that. What if your IT went rogue and you had to cut them out? You can as long as you control the registrar. But if you don't control the registrar, IT can hold you hostage in ways that's completely inappropriate and should never have happened. There's no excuse for that. Now, with DNS, the IT team is able to have the same kind of protections between them and services teams. Those services may be internal, they may be external. But, so your DNS host would never be an internal function. That's always something you're getting somewhere else. IT should have control of it, someone else should have a host of it, should be the host of it. Then that DNS post, uh, points to things like your MX records for email and your A records for your website and things like that. So if those hosts, the ones that actually host your email and host your web and those kind of things, if something happens there and you need to switch by having control of DNS, your IT team is able to point somewhere else. So each of these stages protects you from something going wrong somewhere else, whether it's protecting you from a simple failure right you have a host that went down and you need to move to another and they're not if every if all those functions are one thing and there's an outage you're gone or if they go out of business you're gone you may lose those records but if you have that proper separation of duty you have protections to be able to move between services fluidly as needed without being coupled in a way that locks you in creates higher prices creates higher risk uh, and creates management problems there's no reason to couple those services under a single umbrella there's no cost advantage to it, there's no technical advantage to it, and it simply forces you to hand control of the organization's identity over to the people who are running your website, which is a weird thing. That is a very, very trivial function on one end and an unbelievably critical one on the other, and you're tying the critical to the trivial rather than the trivial to the critical. So that's what I mean by bundling, and it's about separation of duty within the organization, whether technical or business, and it's just something to think about. But the two biggest examples, and I really want you to take these away, never tie any service to your ISP, never. That doesn't mean ISPs are bad. It's not something about ISPs at all. It's simply that the ISP deals with physical infrastructure. They are one type of organization, and there is never a time that you want to, un uh, to unnecessarily couple any independent service, voice, email, DNS, anything, into your physical infrastructure. That's crazy. We live in a world of no locality based risk. You would never want to introduce that just because you're being lazy for a moment. And the other is your registrar DNS and services host stack. Keep those separate. Now you're gonna see these kinds of things throughout IT and throughout business. Great, apply that logic there. But these are the two big examples that come up all the time and we're constantly having to explain to people why these are specific well-known issues that should be avoided and we shouldn't be running into them and yet they come up time and time again because organizations are not learning from these mistakes and they really do end up getting held hostage on a regular basis. And you will. this is how you find companies who are paying $1,000 a month for services that could easily be $100 a month because they're either directly extorted by their vendors or they're so sure that they will be that they're unwilling to make the move and save the money. All right, thanks for joining me here on Sam IT on YouTube. And remember to like and subscribe. And as always, I will eventually be posting the link to the discussion in the notes below. And you can jump in and talk about this and other items online. Thanks.